Hey guys, it's Bill from Linda, Tennessee. If you recall, if you made it far enough into the last video, I briefly introduced these uh, new battery cells. These are EVE 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells. These are off, uh, I, I got these from a company called uh, 18650battery.com or 18650.com, something like that. Uh, and they, they're like less than 40 bucks a piece. And I've ultimately I bought 102 of them so far, but I may be bumping that up to 112 for reasons I will cover at a later date if I actually do it or not. But anyway, I've been kind of playing with them to see what I can do because I want to put a whole bunch of them in the front. I want to try and simulate the motor, the engine that was in front, the engine transmission combination that was in front. I want to simulate that weight just so the stance of the truck is correct, first of all, but just so the handling and the alignment is all correct. And so I need some weight in the front, and that's what these will do. Each of these are about 4.4 pounds. So if I end up with about, I don't know, say 70-something in front, that works out to the right weight. Let's go, let's go up here see what we've done. Now, right now I'm going to uh, pause this for a second. I'm going to show you a picture. Okay, so in that picture, that is what all of those 76 cells look like when they are arranged um, on this cutout. And uh, pfft, yeah, there you go. So that's what I did. So I put all them cells in an a arrangement that would fit in this battery compartment and um, then put all the terminals on top of it so that I can see where the, um, where the outputs will be. And that's what I came up with, and it worked out pretty good. And here is uh, that cutout in the engine bay. And it um, it fits magnificently well. The only thing I'm not 100% sure of is over here underneath my brake lines. Um, at the moment, that's exactly, <laughs> pretty much exactly where they are. And that's probably not going to work when I say exactly where they are. That's where the top of the battery is, is pretty much right where those... Brake lines are now that's obviously not going to work because the top of the battery is going to be a little bit taller than that. Now, a few things I could do with that. Let's show you the master cylinder. Now, the master cylinder from Volkswagen has a whole mess of outlook out uh, outputs because what they do is each uh, they have a, a front and a rear, sorry, not a front, a left and a right. So there's six outputs in total. Two of them are for a uh, pressure switch for the brake lights. And then the other two in the front and the back, they are for uh, for the brake lines. Instead of just having one go to the front, one go to the back, two go to the front, two go to the back. So it's a little bit awkward, but well, what I can do with that is I can just block off two of them. So these two right here, they go to the back. What I can do is I can block those lower ports off completely and run um one of just to have one brake line going to the back that's what you're if you open the hood on any other car that's what you'll see you've got one brake line going to the back one going to the front uh, i don't really know why they would have broke it up like that uh, so all i can do is i can just combine those two into one of the side ports and combine the two fronts into one of the side ports and then block off the bottom ports keep the top two the other top two ports for my brake switches. Anyway, that's a that's future build. One other thing you might notice is that I don't have motor mounts anymore. That's where the left and the right uh, motor mounts used to be. And there also used to be a big old battery tray here. Well, I got rid of that for the 12-volt battery. I am going to have a 12-volt battery, but it doesn't need to be that big, and it doesn't need to be there. The kind of cool thing about all this is, if I take this bar, this is about, that's a, that's a one-inch well, it's not quite an inch, but it's close enough. And then uh, have this roughly where the top of the box will be. You can see that I've got some space between uh, right here and the top of what the box will be. Likewise on the other side. So what I can do is I can have a frunk. I can just make a tray. Make a tray that goes, you know, goes down and then there's just this big open area. And maybe it could have a lid on it or not. But I could have a frunk. So you could put groceries in there or... Whatever, you can do anything you want with it, but that'd be kind of sweet. Uh, and then 
you know, if the front goes back to say right here, it doesn't need to go all the way back. In fact, it can't because I got a little washer reservoir right here. So maybe the front could be cut out, but you know, say the front goes back to right about here, then I can just have a, a cover panel right there. And then I could have uh, components back here, DC, DC chart, DC, DC converter, maybe a junction box, perhaps. I don't know, just stuff like that. And that would be really, really great. Then over here, those are the, um, that's where the pass through is for the air conditioning lines for the uh, evaporator in the car and in the interior. So I will have air conditioning on this, I hope. And then, so those lines could come through here and then just my evaporate, my pump could be over here or perhaps the pump could be back behind that cover somewhere. Um, just whatever, you know, I, it just gives me space to put stuff. Uh, and that is a luxury that EV conversions generally don't have. But back to this battery box. So this is going to have, this will have 76 cells in it. And at 4.4 pounds each, that works out to 334.4 pounds. Then plus maybe, you know, 30 pounds or something worth of battery box. And I'm right there where the uh, engine transmission was in a nice compact, um, you know, thing that's really nice and low to the chassis. So that's obviously good for handling. And that means... If I have 102, then I would need 76 uh, more. Yeah, 70, uh, sorry, 26 more to go in the back. If I have 112, then I need 36 more to go in the back. But either way, um, it, and, you know, I'd need a much, much smaller box in the back, which is fine, because I'm going to have 200 pounds worth of electric motor, and then whatever, you know, whatever... Um, 36 or six, whatever, whatever the two, 36 or 26, whatever that is, this is how much room I have, uh, for the, for to put batteries. And, uh, so that's more than enough room. I'll have plenty of room in the back and I'm going to splice this in right about here. I didn't have this done originally when I did the first part of this video, but through the magic of editing. This is all going to be one seamless, uninterrupted video. This is the back battery box. I told you earlier that I got 102 of these cells. That makes for kind of an awkward voltage. It's plenty to run the drive unit, but it's not as much as um, like an OEM car. And if I get 10 more, that'll be 112. And 112 of these cells would be exactly what OEM voltages are so whenever you see cars that are like 400 volts or whatever it's really like depending on how uh, deep you charge them or how high you charge them how you would say that it's more like 402 volts peak but it's really more a nominal voltage of about 396 or so and that's what this would be so that gives me some options that I can cover it at a later date. But anyway, this is the rear battery box, and it is uh, much, much smaller, obviously, than the other one. And it will fit behind the, uh, under the bed, no problemo. Okay. I can put my charger back there. I'm going to have a 10 kilowatt Tesla Model S charger. It'll be 10 kilowatts. It's a giant charger. It's a lot of power. Um, actually, it's more power than... I would ever charge this thing at home. My inverter for my off-grid inverter, it's only 12 kilowatts. So if I had that thing charging at full speed, yeah, it'd get filled up fast, but it, I wouldn't be able to do much else with my inverter, especially if the inverter was uh, powering the house. But if the inverter was just powering the garage, then I could totally do that. Um, and I would charge this thing up quick. So, I mean, you know, for example, if it takes 10 kilowatts, 10 kilowatt hours, to get to work and back and then I can just plug it in for an hour and it'll be full that is pretty fast charging um, for not DC fast charging <laughs> if you know what I mean anywho that's uh, that's pretty sweet I'm kind of kind of excited about that and I'll also have room in the back say so let's let's go under, let's go underneath here for a minute I don't have any light I don't know how this is gonna work in my normal unscripted way that's what we're doing so I showed you that cutout of the cardboard so that the front of the cardboard would go against that rear bulkhead back there and then uh, it would extend to maybe 
maybe that rib. Yeah, probably about that where that rib is. And so that means I'd have all this room up above there. Now the room over here, that's where this uh, drive unit's going to be, but the back will be completely open. So there's going to be space between what essentially is the back of this box and the uh, rear suspension, the DD on tube. And I think I'll be able to put the radiator back here and then just sort of angle it at a 45 degree angle or whatever, just so that it'll fit. Uh, and then just have the radiator back here. So uh, the charger is water cooled and the motor is water cooled, but these batteries are not, they're not liquid cooled at all, which I, I kind of like that a lot. Uh, it's kind of simplicity, but I can just have the motor and the charger on one cooling loop and just have it run through the factory radiator, which is kind of sweet. The sort of uh, part that I haven't figured out yet is I'd have to have a, a reservoir, an overfill reservoir, and it needs to be higher than the radiator, and obviously I need to be able to get to it. So I don't exactly know how I will do that. <laughs> but again, that's that's future build problems. This uh, convenient little this little tunnel would have been for the exhaust, but I'm going to use it for uh, for battery cables, which is, I mean it's obviously clearly enough room for all that. So I can just run battery cables through there. And what else would need to go through there? Not much, really. There's no coolant lines going through there. Um, I don't know. Pretty cool. So I don't, I'm going to have quite a bit of room in here, which is a, a big novelty for EVs. And uh, yeah, so I guess I guess what I'll need to do next. Oh yeah, one other thing about these one other thing about these batteries I wanted to kind of bring up. If you look at these things. Uh, They've got this blue coating, not a coating, it's tape. It's like tape on it. Um, but this isn't a good example. But yeah, if we, if we kind of peel this back, you see how it's silver underneath there. Well, that silver is the positive terminal. So if you go from negative and touch silver with a voltmeter, you get full battery voltage. So one thing that I cannot, absolutely cannot have happen is for these two, is for these cells to touch each other and possibly vibrate over time and rub together. Because if if the case of that one touches the case of that one, it would be exactly the same as just touching this positive to that negative. And these are, you know, the way these are going to be arranged, that would be a direct short and it would be horrible. That would be really, really bad. Uh, lights out for the motor and possibly a fire for the rest of the thing. So we do not want that to happen. I'm kind of tossing up ideas about how to keep them separated got to keep them separated there's this stuff called fish paper i don't know why they call it fish paper but i've ordered some and basically what it is it's a 25 foot long roll it's five inches wide and it's it's made for this purpose really it's a uh, electrically um non-conductive and it's i guess hard wearing i don't know what the stuff's made of but it and it's got sticker sticky tape on the back of one side so i'll just take i'll make a whole bunch of little pieces taken tape it around either two sides, three sides, maybe all four sides, and then put them all together. And then they will be, uh, then there won't be any way of them ever touching because that stuff won't let it wear. And then I'll also, when I make this box, I will make it uh, tight. I'll make it tight so that these these batteries are, are squoze in there real good and tight so they're less likely for them to move around. And... The battery is going to be constructed of one by one square tube. And in that gap, you see where I've got this line drawn up there. That that line right there is wrong. You can see where it's. So there'll be another, you know, be a line down this way too. Um, that's where the batteries are going to sit. But there's going to be like a one inch gap here. I'm going to get some of that hard insulation foam and line the inside of the battery box with that. It'll be on the bottom and it'll be on the top. And uh, so that there'll be a, you know, the batteries themselves will sit on a one inch thick piece of foam. There'll be one inch thick piece of foam all the way around it. Probably not, maybe on the top, I don't know. Uh, we'll see about that, but certainly on the bottom and on the sides. I want them to, I want it to be insulated from outside, insulated from temperatures outside. So if it's, you know, minus 10 outside, 
And if you imagine just a sheet metal pushed straight up against this and it's minus 10 over here, this other side of sheet metal, this battery would never, ever, uh, it could never warm up. It could never get above freezing because it just, it lose all of its heat to the outside. But if it's insulated with an inch of foam, then it's no problem. Um, if these batteries sit overnight and they cold soak, that is to say the internal temperature gets below freezing, you can't charge lithium batteries when they're frozen. But as soon as you drive with these things, put them, put them under a load, internally they'll heat up and they will, they will warm themselves. So if they were frozen, all you need to do is just go out and drive five miles or something, put them under a load, and internally they'll be warmed up then. That's what you want. Uh, but like I said, if this was touching up against a piece of sheet metal, then this battery would warm up, but this one never would. Some of it would always be would always stay frozen just because it, it couldn't it make that much heat. So that is uh, how that's going to go. I'm thrilled about how this is. If it turns out that I, another another option, if it turns out that I need to lower this down, I can always cut out this part. I was just going to have this sort of angled off because it would look kind of cool and it would give uh, it would give some uh, space for the most positive and the most negative terminal to have battery connections. You know, they would have space for that to happen. But uh, if it works out that it, that's not going to be the case, then I can, you know, I can just, I can eliminate this diagonal here and then just have the battery box come back square, square like that. And then this could drop down a little bit lower because it won't touch that anymore. Uh, but, you know, it's just, that's just something I'll have to noodle with, see what happens. And, uh, but yeah, overall, that's, I'm pretty uh, excited about how, nice that's going to fit and i'll be able to have a frunk and i'll be able to finish this and finish the underhood off and look really nice and uh yeah i guess so the next thing on the books is i don't know i don't know what i'm going to do this went a lot better than i thought it was going to go so i don't know we'll see what happens uh thank you for watching we'll see you next time okay i'm not quite done yet one uh final little nerdy thing so one of the things you know, I, I've taken you to work before and we make machines that um, <clears throat> cut corrugated paper or cardboard into the shape that it takes to make a box. Um, we start with cardboard paper looks something like that. <laughs> and um, we either we can cut the corners out so that it, you know, so it ends up looking like that. And then you can fold together so it, you know, does like box things. Yeah, but we also make partitions, and me in particular, I make partition machines, and a partition is that right there. That is a partition, and you see how that just slides down there. You've all seen this before, but never really thought about it, but there's a machine that makes these things, and I, um, that's one of the machines that I have built. I've built a couple of them. Now, this particular one was most likely done by lasers because it's like really, really perfect, and this whole cutout would have been done by, done by a laser. But there's a factory somewhere that uh, that makes this piece right here. This starts out as just a solid piece of paper, and then it goes into the machine. The machine cuts it out. Somebody takes all the little drops, little scrap out of there, and then takes this and stacks it over there. That stack of these things goes to another section where there's a, a group of workers that, you know, put it all together and, and make, um, make those little grids. So I just thought that's kind of cool to... Uh, you know, to show you that. So, all right, now we're done. Thanks for watching. Bye.